Hello and welcome to this video on the adjustment of status green card application process. Now I previously made a video on the K-1 visa process and I said I'll make this one to follow up from that. Well, I'll make the start of the AOS green card process as I am currently still doing the AOS green card process. My application is being processed as we speak. Um, we sent our paperwork off about three months ago. So in this video, I'm basically gonna go over what you have to do to fill out your AOS process after you arrive in the USA on a K-1 visa. So, you arrived in the USA on a K-1 visa. My last video went all the process leading up to arriving in the United States. So once you arrive in the USA on the K-1 visa, your first step is probably to apply for a social security number. Now you can do this probably about two weeks after you arrive, just so the social security office have your details on system. Unfortunately, when I arrived, coronavirus was a thing and the social security office was shut. So I didn't bother as I could still get a bank account and driving license, or start my driving license process anyway, without getting my social security number. But things are easier with social security number because if you don't get it straight away, you'll need to wait until you get your work permit, which comes as part of the green card process. So wait about two weeks and get your social security number. Then the next step you wanna do is get married. So you obviously might have pre-planned your wedding, you might not have pre-planned your wedding, but you need to get married no matter what, even if it's just a simple courthouse wedding. So you need to go to the courthouse and get yourself say, a marriage license, marriage certificate. This probably changes state to state. The state I am in, you need a three day waiting period. After three days, you could then get married. So we just did a simple ceremony because the coronavirus messed everything up, but it was still pretty nice. It was better than going to the courthouse which you couldn't do anyway because of coronavirus. Luckily, we could still get a marriage license and we got married. Now, once you get married, you need to get your marriage certificate, which should be sent to you after you get married. So once you've got your marriage certificate, you are then ready to start the green card application process. So because you're on the K-1, you're automatically eligible to fill out all this paperwork and apply for a green card. All you have to do is fill out a ton of forms and send them off. So the first step is to fill out, is just for the AOS part. So as part of the AOS part, which stands for Adjustment of Status, you will need to also apply for your work permit and your advanced parole certificate. Now the work permit means you can work before your green card comes. So it will come quicker than the green card. The green card might take a number more months than this. So it means you can start working quicker. And the advanced parole means you can leave the country before your green card comes, if you so need to. You don't have to apply for these. Uh, but if you apply for them separately or at a different time, they cost between four and six hundred dollars for each of those. If you apply for them with the AOS application, green card application, they're included in the price. Okay, so first of all, your AOS, you need to get a check for one thousand two hundred and twenty-five dollars. Now this is a lot of money, but it does include the EAD work permit and the AP advanced parole certificate at the same time if you file them all together. So you need a check for $1,225. You then need to fill out form I-485, which is the adjustment of status form, ticking all the relevant boxes for the most recent visa that you came into the USA on. With that, you want to fill out form G-1145, which is the electronic, uh, electronic um, notification form that we spoke about in the previous K-1 video. You then need two passport photos of yourself of the USA star size, which is two inches by two inches. And on the back, you need to write your name and your alien number. Now your alien number is gonna be on your K-1 visa paperwork that you came into the USA on and in your passport. Just the A, the beginning of the number and then where the number is. There'll be a load of boxes for it on the forms as well and that's where it goes. You need your DS3025, which is your medical information you had done for the K-1 visa. Now this would have been in your K-1 packet or given to you at the embassy or come from your medical exam as well. It's just a big form with all the vaccinations ticked off and it says, keep this for the USA. Um, photocopy it, keep the copy for yourself and put the copy into the packet. You need your I-94. Now the I-94 is just a record of when you entered and left the USA. You can just look up official I-94 online, log in. It tells you when and where you've come in and left the USA and you just need to you just need to screenshot the most recent one and print off the most recent one. It says I-94 and you say print that page off and get a couple photocopies of them. You're gonna need three for this process of the I-94. You need to photocopy the K-1 visa page in your passport that you entered the USA on. Obviously that's got the date as well. And then you need to photocopy the main biographic page of your passport as well. 
You then need I797, which is NOA2 from K1. Now in the K1 video, we spoke about NOA1 and NOA2. NOA2 was the acceptance, you've been accepted on the K1. You need a photocopy of that included in this AOS packet. You need a copy of your birth certificate. It can be a photocopy, that's fine, but you need a photocopy of this certified copy, the big copy, not the little short one. And you need a copy of your marriage certificate, which you can also just photocopy as well. Just make sure the seal or whatever stamp is also can be seen on there and is not blurred out or anything on your marriage certificate. And in any divorce, annulment, name changes, same stuff as K1, any other information that is relevant to this because you've changed your name in the past and stuff like that. Obviously, if you are a girl, then you may have your social security number in your original name. If you first got it two weeks when you first arrived in the USA, then you need to change it again once you're married, which you can go and do at the social security office. But you need to change your name on the marriage certificate first. And then proof you got married. So all we did for our one is we printed an A4 picture with different pictures from the wedding day and labeling who they were and who was with us. And that was basically good enough. Obviously you had a marriage certificate because that proved it, but just this is just physical proof that you actually got married. Okay, so that's all the forms you need for that first bit. Included in that packet, you're also gonna need form I-864, which is the affidavit of support that the petitioner, the person you just married in the USA, fills out to say they are financially responsible for you. Now, they also have to meet the federal poverty guidelines, the same as K-1. But now, instead of being 100% of the federal poverty guidelines, they need to be 125% of the federal poverty guidelines. These forms can be found online, and you just need to make sure you meet the minimum income requirements on that. Now you're gonna prove that on that form with your most recent tax transcript or your W-2 or 1040 tax forms, but you're gonna to wanna to meet the tax transcript with that one. If you do not meet the income requirements, you can get a co-sponsor the same as the K-1. Now the co-sponsor also has to fill out form I-864, you both do, no matter if you're getting a co-sponsor or not, and provide all of their tax information as well. So if they haven't got a tax transcript, they need their W-2 and 1040 tax information and all scared tax schedules. Basically all the tax information they would have for the solution of that tax year if they don't have the tax transcript. All can be found on the instructions of the Form I-864 tells you exactly what you need when you're filling that out. So as long as the person, the petitioner or the co-sponsor meets above the federal poverty guidelines, which is 125% this time, you're all good you're all eligible to be filled out. Added onto that as well, you might wanna add some pay slips and stuff like that. But for this one, they just want the tax information. Now, something new that they've added recently, which got added at the beginning of this year, was form I-944. I-944 is a declaration of self-sufficiency. Now, this is used for other sort of visas as well. So when you're filling out with this, it's a little bit confusing. But it's basically just saying, you as a couple now, are going over all your assets, or if you're a family, all your assets that you have to prove you're not gonna become a burden on the state. So simply fill the form out, write all your assets, write how much money you got in cash, stocks, bonds, houses, cars, everything like that. Also, the petitioner's income as well. They wanna know your whole financial situation. And to prove all that, you need to add your tax information as well, and pay slips, proof of employment, your employment contract, all of that sort of stuff. And then like bank statements for the last six months, you can't add too much, basically. But add bank statements, add pay slips, all of that I-944 wants on its information. Also, for the person coming into the USA, they want proof that you are good enough at communicating English. Now, you're gonna have an interview for this, so they could just see you at the interview and say, oh, great, you speak English. But no, 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 you've gotta prove it. So if you aren't an English speaker naturally, you've gotta prove that you've done sort of some sort of course, or you've got some sort of um, proof that you've like someone believed you speak English, you've done some sort of course or qualification in English. Um, and even for myself, who comes from an English speaking country, I had to put some sort of proof down. So all I just included was my GCSE English certificate that says I got a B in English literature um, back then. Obviously all my certificates were in English as well. Um, I also added all my other school certificates because it wants proof of education. So if you've got a degree, if you've got any other trade qualifications, you need to add proof of that and write it down. All this form is for is for them to use to say this person is less likely to become a burden on the state. Now, it's a little bit silly with this because your petitioner or your co-sponsor is filling out form I-864 to prove that they're gonna be supporting you, that they are the sponsor to make sure you're not gonna become a burden on the state. So I do believe that I form I-944 is mainly for other visas, 
but they require you to fill it out anyway. So fill it out as exactly as it asks, and I'm pretty sure they just use the I-864 anyway, but they might go back to this as bonus. Okay, so you filled those forms out, added all together, add the form I-944, added that all together, so lay them on the floor next to each other so you know you've got every little bit of paper together. Now, also with this as well, you want to fill out for the work permit and the advanced pro. Now, the work permit is called an EAD, Employment Authorization Document. Now, other people with other visas can apply for an EAD as well, and an AP, which is advanced pro. Now, advanced pro means you can leave the USA before you get your green card if you so need to. Because if you leave before you get that, then you won't be allowed in and you've broken the rules of the visa. So for the EAD, you need to fill out form I-765, which is the form for that, that visa. You need to fill out form G-1145, which is the electronic notification form, again, for the same as every form. You need another copy of your I-94, like we said before, just go online, look it up, print it off. You need your I-797, your NOA-2 which was one we said about before from the K1. You need a copy of NOA2, so just make four copies of that. You need another copy of your marriage certificate, and you need another two passport photos with your name and alien number on the back. Now these forms are quite small and quite easy to fill out. Then for the advanced parole, it's basically the same. So the advanced parole form is form I-131. You need, then need again form G-1145, so you've got an electronic notification of that. Then you need your I-94 again, so get, make it enough copies of them and you need your marriage certificate, and you need another two passport photos. So you need six total passport photos included in this whole packet. Now once all of that is filled out, all correctly, make sure it's all signed at the end in the rice boxes, make sure everything's filled out. There'll be a lot of blank space, especially on the earlier forms, the bigger ones, because some of it's relevant to different cases, depending on how you got into the USA. But don't worry about that, just fill out all the bits that are relevant to you. They all come with instructions as well, so you can look at the instructions for each of the forms. Uh, they're quite long-winded, but you can find exactly the facts you need on those. And um, the important ones are the, the financial ones that they want to make sure they're filled out correctly. Now, once you've filled all that out, you're gonna put them all together in their own separate area. So clip all them together with their own evidence. So the form I-485 with all of its evidence, the 864 with all the evidence, the I-944, all of its evidence, the I-765, all of its evidence, and the I-131, all of its evidence. So you're gonna have five packets, five clipped together chunks of paperwork, put that all in an envelope with the check, and send it to the address on the USCIS website. I will put the addresses that I know of, that are currently the addresses, in the description, um, but they may change. So those addresses currently sent, and once your packet gets sent off, they're gonna check it and make sure anything's missing, if anything is missing or they want more evidence, they're gonna send you an RFE, exactly the same as the K1, and you respond to it the same. You fill out what it says to do on the K1 and send it back to them, and then they process the case based on the evidence you have submitted. Now, this is the point to where I am up. I am still waiting back to hear from my case status and how long it's gonna take. I do not know. Corona is taking its sweet time. Corona is making it take its sweet time. So. After this, you need to wait. The first bit that will probably happen is you'll get your EAD. Now, I don't know this for a fact, but seeing as you're gonna get your work permit before you get your green card, you'll get your work permit and your advanced parole together, so you can then work and leave the USA if you need to. And in a number of months after that, you'll get your green card after you've done a face-to-face -face interview with someone. But as soon as you get your work permit, you've then got a social security number, you can then easily get a driving license, bank account, if your state didn't allow it earlier and you weren't able to get a social security number. So yeah, that's it. That's how you fill out all those forms. I will put all the forms in the description and hopefully they'll be on the screen as well if I manage to do that. So yes, that's what you need to fill out for the AS process. It's a lot, a lot of paperwork, but if you all get it right, it should go smoothly. Okay, good luck.